So one of the things I want to cover is what we might consider to be the ideal layout for an HMO room, um, for a professional-let HMO room, certainly. Um, anyway, so Ben, what's your, what's your take on that from what you've learned? What's the ideal layout for an HMO bedroom in a professional shared house? Well, obviously, you want to try and get en suites in every room if you possibly can. There's a lot of considerations to be made around those, where the soil pipes are, where you can try and get mains water in, uh, into, and you've got to be very, very aware of the room size as well. Um, you've got to make sure you're reaching the minimum room size for your um, square meters for the area that you're in, yep. and that mustn't include the size of the ensuite. So that's key to being able to look into do. Some will work, some won't. Where they can, it's ideal to try and do. Definitely. Then after that, you've got to really consider where you want to be putting the beds and the wardrobes. We've been looking to try and make use of the dead space that's behind doors as a perfect place Great to be putting the wardrobes in as it just allows far more um, room within the room to be used for the rest of the furniture. Absolutely, that's a really, I mean, that's a really good tip, to be honest, for you guys at home, is, is look at the dead spaces, and when we're reconfiguring the property as well, another yeah. point is, is hallways. I hate hallways, they're a waste of space. If you can pull a door frame back, you know, a meter or two, down the hallway, um, so you're sort of coming up the stairs, and you know, you might have a sort of a, a small landing, and you're into the rooms, um, you know, provided that doesn't feel too crowded and you don't overdo it, nicking bits of hallway and using space behind doors for wardrobes, space that would never be used ordinarily. So yeah, really, really good tip in terms of use of space. And it also counts that extra bit of, you know, nick, that extra bit of landing that you've nicked by moving the door frame up potentially, that will count as usable floor space when you're measuring the floor space. So your minimum size standards, if you've got a room that is particularly close to the minimum size standards, roughly about 6.5, 6.51 meters squared in a lot of areas, but obviously check the current regulations with your local council what that is, both the HMO regulations and the um, you know, national housing standard minimum size requirements. Make sure you cover all of those and check those up in your area. Um, but yeah, nicking that little extra square meter on the hallway can count towards room size. So on the, the rooms that are a bit iffy, can be a good use of space. And there's actually a couple of rooms here which were below minimum size before, and we've had to move them back, haven't we? So yep. this area here is one. Um, so do you want to talk us through what we've done on this area, Ben? Yeah, so effectively we brought the uh, the, the wall for the kitchen forward um, and then reconfigured the kitchen here. That actually created more space in the bedroom that is behind that to then actually make an ensuite out of the downstairs cloakroom that was there and bring the bedroom that was quite a small size to above the minimum standard yeah, required. Nicely above, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's that's another ensuite double bedroom out of a house that ordinarily wouldn't have had it if you were kind of looking at just turning that into a bedroom. No ensuite, iffy on the sides. It was very close. It was about six point six point five meters. It was within millimeters almost, wasn't it? That originally. Yeah. So it was just horrible little room, and now it's a lovely luxury, you know, yeah. medium size um, double ensuite bedroom. So Certainly yeah, above any minimum. Good tip there. Another tip that I want to. Um, have Ben show you is one of the things to do with the boiler system and um, you know Ben you touched upon um, the on suites and getting the services to them when you're doing an HMO conversion you're adding services you know a lot of HMO conversions um, unless you've got several on suites already and some houses have the luxury of that so you might get lucky in your sourcing and find an ideal house already um, but you know a lot of the cost is adding those on suites and you can easily be spending anything from sort of two to four thousand pounds adding an on suite um, you know I usually in my calculations when working out the costs Put about three grand in there for an ensuite, and that will include everything right up to the fixtures and finishings. But it can include getting the services there, which can be quite tricky. Yeah. Um, so what do we have to do with this boiler here? We actually changed the boiler, didn't we? And we did. What did we boiler, do for the hot water? The original boiler was a combi boiler, which just wasn't going to be up to the job for the size of the house, frankly. So we had to change the boiler to uh, a normal condenser boiler. Mm -hmm. And then what we actually did was upgrade the water tank system and got a tall cylinder placed in the room just above here, mm -hmm. and we're able to get it in the gap that was left from where we created the ensuite. Yep. So an ideal use of space, um, so it did not intrusive to, no, we lost space, no valuable yeah. room space at all. We still were able to have access to it, to service it, we'll partition it off so there's no sound particularly that's coming from it, and no one will actually see it. We'll make a nice shelving area from it, still being able to get access, obviously. But it was just uh, an ideal way to be able to fully service the house with the upgraded requirements that we've now got yeah. um, and making best use of the space. That was yeah. a real win-win that was. That was a good one, yeah, nice find. Okay, thanks for that Ben. And just to sort of summarise that then, it's you know really important to look at the services, both incoming, plumbing, soil pipes, getting those two there, that can be a big cost of the en-suites. 
um, but also the water capacity. Make sure that if everyone in the building is using the shower at the same time, we've got that new water heater in there that's been knocked in the room above, yeah. um, you know, to better cope with the extra load at peak times. Really, really important. Can be a high cost. It's worth doing that stuff early in the development. You know, you might have an old boiler in there that's that, that even if it could be converted to work, it's probably going to be inefficient and rubbish. So replace it now whilst you get your plumbers in, whilst you're making a mess around the rest of the house. Get it done early. Invest in the property. Um, this boiler, I think, has got a it's either a six or an eight year warranty on it. So um, you know, I've got some peace of mind there for the for the months to come. So yeah, good advice from our lead project manager Ben Collins. <laughs>